Hey everybody, um, Minister O'Neill here. Hope you guys are having a wonderful time uh, in your living rooms. Um, before we started worship, I just wanted to uh, invite you. So I know it can be a little bit daunting uh, being in your living room and not in an actual building, but I wanted to encourage you that uh, the Ecclesia of God, the Church of the Living God, is not a building and it doesn't happen in a building. It's where the kingdom is, and the kingdom is in your heart today. So I just wanted to encourage you as we enter into worship that you just change around your living room a bit. If you have to move a couch, move a couch. If you have to, you know, stand up and just kind of give yourself a little bit of a stretch. We want to make a sanctuary in our living room. Of course, we make our sanctuary in our home. Uh, in the Lord, we are the sanctuary of the Lord. Um, but we want to consecrate this space and make this space a place where we are freely worshiping, freely um, giving our love to the Lord. So just take some time. Just just move yourselves around and, and just start to lift your hands and, you know, just speak to the Lord, sing to the Lord in your own way, with your own words. Just be very much encouraged that I can't sing for you. I can't... Um, do anything for you, but Jesus has done it all. So Jesus, we lift our voice. We lift our voice to you. And you shatter every fear as we look to you, God. This morning, this morning, we press in and see your face, oh God. We behold you as we gather together and agree on your name. We are never alone, never alone, never alone. Okay. Let me say for you. For you are the one we love to name. Jesus shine through. All the praises that we sing for you, for you, are the one we love to me. Jesus shine through all the praises that we sing, we sing. Come and let. Come and let your presence fill our praise, fill our praise. Come and let your presence fill this place. Come and let your presence fill our praise, fill our praise. Come and let your presence fill this place. Come and let your presence fill our praise, fill our praise. Come and let your presence fill this place as we worship God. Come and let your presence fill our praise, fill our praise. Come and let your presence fill this place for you, for you. Are the one we want to be. Jesus shine, Jesus shine through. All the praises that we sing for you are the one we love to me. Jesus shine through, Jesus shine through. All the praises that we sing, because it's all for you, it's all for you. Here we are, here we are, standing in your presence, it's all for you. Here we are, here we are, God, it's all for you. Ooh, here we are, here we are, it's all for you.
on, say we love you. Oh, we love you. We love you, Lord. You're the one. You're the one we came here for. We love you. We love you, Lord. You're the one our hearts. Say it again. We love you. We love you. We love you, Lord. You're the one we came here for. We love you. We love you, Lord. You're the one our hearts adore. You're the one. You're the one our hearts adore. Oh God, oh God, oh God, you're the one, you're the one our hearts adore. You're the one our hearts adore. You're the one we came here for. We love you. We love you, Lord. You're the one our hearts adore. We love you. We love you, Lord. You're the one we came here for. We love you. We love you. Adore. And just begin to lift your voice to the Lord. Oh, Father, oh, great King, sovereign God, you are our Father. You are my Father right here and now. How we love you, how we love you, how we love you, God. You just keep lifting your voice. How we love you, how we love you, God. How we love you, God. We love you, Jesus. There's nothing that is worth more. There's no one that is better. Oh, to be in your presence. Oh, to bask in your presence, all oh, the gift, all oh, the gift of your indwelling presence. We remember you this morning. Good God, good God, how we love you, we love you, we love you. Mm. Yes, God. We say we love you. And you say that in, when the world is filled with fear, Lord, when the world wants to be stuck in fear, God, we say that there is no fear in love. And the love that you bring, there is no fear in love. For perfect love casts out fear because fear is involved with torment, Lord. We thank you that there is no one like you that gives us love that always displaces the fear. And we remember this morning, we say the Lord, and the Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. I will wait on you. I will trust in you. 
I will trust in you. And we say, I will remain confident. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Come on, encourage yourself. I will remain. Yes, I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. I will remain. I will remain. Confident in this, I will see the goodness of the Lord. Yes, I will remain. I will remain. Confident in this, I will see the goodness of the Lord. And the Lord, the Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? And the Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? And I will wait on you. I will wait on you. I will trust in you. And I will trust in you. And I will remain. I will remain. Confident in this, I will see the goodness of the Lord, and I will remain, I will remain. Confident in this, I will see the goodness of the Lord, and I will remain, I will remain. Confident in this, I will see the goodness of the Lord, I will Confident in this, I will see the goodness of the Lord. We set our hope on you. We set our hope on you. We set our hope on your love. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. You are the everlasting. We set our hope on on you we set our hope on your love we set our hope on the one who is the everlasting god you are the everlasting god you are the everlasting we set our hope on you we set our hope on your love we set our hope on the one who is the everlasting God? You are the everlasting God. You are the everlasting. We set our hope on you. We set our hope on your love. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. We see, I will remain, I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Come on, say, we will remain confident. We will remain confident in this. We will see the goodness of the Lord. We will remain, we will remain confident in this. We will see the goodness of the Lord. We will remain confident in this. We will see the goodness of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So I thank you for the hiding place and the shelter that is found in your secret place. We say, Lord, that we rest in the midst of a shaking world. We rest 
in your name and in your promises, for all of them are yes and amen. They will never fail and they will never fall to the ground. Good morning, Kingdom Gate Equipment Center. Remember, we are a 21st century church with a first century mandate. And that mandate is to equip you to see your entire life through God's eyes. We want to welcome you to this morning's service. We are praying that as you tune in, uh, you will be blessed by the word of God that's coming forth out of the servant of God. And also, too, I want us to be reminded that even in the midst of crisis, that Jesus Christ is here with us. I don't want us, any one of us to act the world the way the world is acting, and that's panic, panic stricken. If we remember a couple of weeks ago, our man of God apostle gave us the definition for the word uh, panic or pandemic, and that is he taught us about the Greek God and the screech that he would come down every time at a certain time and give a loud screech that would bring a fear into the hearts of the men. Well, we are people who do not operate in fear. We operate in the spirit of God. And I want to say to us that today we are going to be blessed as we're tuning in to hear the message. And we want you to stay tuned for this morning's announcements. Good morning. My name is Kyle Gary E. Collinsworth here with your KGEC News. I'm a reporter reporting on local bodies of the God of the Universe. Now, specifically, I am reporting on KGEC or Kingdom Gate Equipping Center. I will be providing your news update. You are used to seeing a young man named Marlon McGlashan doing your announcements. He no longer will be here. He is currently on quarantine. <laughs> that sucks. Now, the first thing that is taking place at KGEC is the clothing drive. However, due to what is going on now in the world, that will be postponed. We encourage you to gather all your belongings, put it in a bag, and until we are able to safely retrieve it from you, we're asking you to keep it where it is. Thank you. Next, I'd like to report that KGEC now is a cyber church. That means everything that takes place at KGEC will be done online. Spiritual growth classes, the message, Bible study, all done online. Links will be provided for you in the WhatsApp group. And if you do not have WhatsApp on Facebook, and if you do not have Facebook, email. Okay, now the last thing I'd like to report is that KGEC is a praying church. That means at 5 a.m. on the prayer line, you can expect to hear everyone on there praying, praying for the city, praying for whatever God has laid upon their heart. Now, also, at noon, the prayer line will also be open to those who are working from home to also pray for what God has laid on your heart. Now, just to recap the last report, every morning from Monday to Friday, 5 a.m. to 6 a.m., we will be on the prayer line. And then also again from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. on the prayer line. Saturday is from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. on the prayer line. We encourage you all to join us as we pray early in the morning, starting our days off right with the Lord. And then Sundays you can join us on YouTube for church. All right, that is everything. Thank you for watching. We send blessings to Marlon who is quarantined and I will see you all next week. My name is Kyle Gary E. Collinsworth and that was your KGEC News Update. Signing off. Well, welcome to our Cyber Church service this morning. We are so delighted, I'm so delighted that you have joined us. And we're looking forward to experiencing the presence of God right where you're listening. Whether you're right in your living room, your bedroom, your kitchen. We just believe that the same God who is right here with me is also right there with you. We're believing for transformation to take place today. Let's go before the Lord in a word of prayer. Gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we're gathering around your word. 
We thank you that even as you've anointed me to speak, I know that you've anointed each person under the sound of my voice to hear. Father, I thank you that we'll hear one thing but understand many. Thank you, O oh God, that you are moving in homes, you're moving in families, and you're moving and you're causing lives to be transformed and to be impacted so that truly we can be your agents of change in the earth. We thank you for the love with which you love us with. And Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for what you are about to do even now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, saints, this morning, what we're going to be looking at, we're going to look at this topic that the Spirit of God really placed within my heart to, to speak and to strengthen you in this hour. And the topic is for, you, for us to keep going to the end. Keep going to the end. I know that not only us here in Toronto, but all over the world, we're all experiencing this crisis as it pertains to the coronavirus, COVID-19. And even right now, we address that spirit. We address and declare that it has no access within your life. Because of the blood of Jesus, we understand that we have a blood-bought right to be standing in wholeness and to be protected from every danger seen or unseen. So we, we've been standing on Psalms 91 as it pertains to protection, but also we understand that we, because we walk in the love of God, that we are able to see fear subsided in our midst. So this morning, what we're going we're gonna to start out, if you have your Bible, would you turn with me to the book of First Corinthians chapter 13? First Corinthians chapter 13, and this is going to be the foundational aspect, the foundational verse for what we're going to be looking at today. The Word of God tells us, the Apostle Paul reads, says, If I speak with human eloquence and angelic ecstasy but don't love, I am nothing but the creaking of a rusty gate. If I speak God's word with power, revealing all his mysteries and making everything plain as a day, and if I have faith that says to a mountain, jump, and it jumps, but I don't love, I am nothing. If I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, but I don't love, I've gotten nowhere. So no matter what I say, or what I believe and what I do, I am bankrupt without love. He goes on to tell us, love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut. Love doesn't have a swelled head. It doesn't force itself on others. It's always, it's never always me first. Doesn't fly off the handle. Love doesn't keep score of the sins of others. Love doesn't revel when others grovel. Love takes pleasure in the flowering of truth. Love puts up with everything. Love trusts God always. It always, always looks for the best never looks back and this is where it is but love keeps going to the end glory to God you see the love of God your a love for God that has been shed abroad within our heart is what is going to keep us in this season keep us in this crisis when we are told that we have to experience and shift the way in which we operate as it pertains to social distancing, as it pertains to uh, self being self-quarantined, we're in a season of change. We're in a season in which a lot of different things is taking place. And while we're at home, while we're working from home, while we are spending even more quality time or with family, we are learning, one of the key things we're learning is, is to love God even more. To allow God's love to saturate within our hearts and within our homes and within our family. And also that where we begin to also consider loving our neighbor as ourselves, as Jesus instructed us. So we men and women, we got to understand Kingdom Gate Equipping Center, 
everyone. I want to encourage us that this is a season in which we need to allow the love of God to motivate us and carry us, keep us going to the end. Because there is an end to this crisis. There is an end. There's going to be a day when we're, we're allowed to come back out and be, be social again and interact. And we're going to appreciate even people even more than we have ever. We're going to appreciate even crowds even a little bit more than we probably have in time past. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 21 to 23 tells us. A passage of scripture that tells us here yes this I call to mind and therefore I have hope you see I understand my brother and my sister I understand that while you are it, we're in this season there's a, a level of se uh, loss of hope loss of, of, of feelings that we, we begin to, to allow fear and anxiety and stress that tries to come and like a wave kind of blank us over but just wave and throw over but I want to instruct you and encourage you here where in Lamentations 321 tells us I call to mind and therefore I have hope what is he calling to mind? I call to mind because of the Lord's great love because of his great love, we are not consumed for his compassions, glory to God, never fail. The Lord loves you, and it's his love that is keeping you, his love that's sustaining and keeping you and your family, glory to God. They are God's love, God's compassions are new every day, glory to God. Morning by morning, it's new. And I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to, to hang in there. I want to encourage you not to give up. I know it for, for A plus A, A plus personality people or real individuals who are who are extroverts, you want to get outside. You're you're maybe even getting a little annoyed staying at home. And if you have a, 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 a little children and you now have to be teaching them, you gotta be the teacher, you gotta be the principal, you gotta be, you know. The, the, the janitor, you got to be everything at home. But guess what? I don't want you to give up. I want you to, to hang in there. I want you to understand that you are in the right place at the right time right now. Because as you're inside, you're, you're being protected from even the dangers that's on the outside. But the, the joy about it is, is that you're getting some quality time. You're getting some time with God, some time with your family that you may never have experienced before. So hang in there, hang in there, hang in there, because this is a critical time. In the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, tells us that there's a time for everything. Glory to God. It's a time, verse 2 says, a time to give birth and a time to, to die. <clears throat> a time to plant and a, a time to uproot what is planted. I'm reading from the message translation. Verse 3 tells us there's a time to kill and a time to heal. There's a time to tear down and a time to build up. There's a time to weep and there's a time to laugh. There's a time to mourn and glory to God. There's a time to dance. There's a time to throw stones and a time to gather stones. There's a time to embrace and a time to shun from embracing. It seems that Solomon understood that there's social distancing. There's a time to, 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 to distance. There's a time to search and a time to give up as lost. There's a time to keep and a time to throw away. There's a time to tear apart and a time to sew together. There's a time to be silent and a time to speak. There's a time, this is where we're talking, Solomon is talking about self-quarantine. There's a time of being silent, of solitude, of being by yourself and it's okay. It's a time to, there's a time to love, he tells us, and a time to hate. There's a time for war and a time for peace. Isn't it interesting that the, the, the one of the good things that, that has come about through this COVID-19 is that there's no wars. There's no wars taking place right now. There's, there's, there's peace. There's a level of peace. But the reality is, is that we want to identify what is taking place while we're in this season, while we're locked in, we're locked down for a season. How do we respond and what happens? What do we need to be doing in this season? 
I want to encourage you, precious one, that you understand the importance that as love, as you're anchored in love, that it is love that's going to keep us, that's going to motivate us, that's going to take us to the end, to the end. Because it looks like literally we're going to be in this for at least another month, at least another probably to the ending of April. So we need to shift our mind. We've got to shift our mindset. You've got to shift your thinking. I know if you're like me, initially when this first, when they first rolled this, when this was first rolled out, you initially thinking, okay, well, you know what, you know, this is just going to be for a couple of days. You know what, you might be able to, to adjust. Or maybe even initially that you felt, my, I, I can't do this. This is annoying. But this is our quote unquote norm for a moment. So what do we need to do? We need to make some adjustments. And I want to shift for a moment and, and, and speak to us because where I where prophetically that I see that what's taking place is that we are being brought into a cocoon. Amen. Yes. We've been brought into a cocoon. And if we will admit it, that for many of us, we don't like being in this place of restriction. But I want to encourage you that instead of seeing your home as a place of, of, of conflict and restriction, see it as a place of peace. See the place where you you welcoming Father God into your home, welcoming the, the element of you being able to have proper relationship with God and with each other. That we center, we understand that we need back the family, that it gives us an opportunity now to slow down, slow our roll, because we've been so driven as a people, driven as a society. It truly is a time when I heard the Spirit of God say, reset. It really is a time for reset. Resetting in every aspect of our life. Resetting of our values. Resetting on, on how we relate as people. Because our morals have been impacted. Our morals have been impacted. We've actually been functioning from more from a perspective of flexible morality. And let me give you a definition of that. For some of you may be hearing that for the first time. But flexible morality is, is not adhering to a certain set of principles. Instead, morally adapting to the situation at hand. This is what we've been doing as a, as a society. Is that we've been changing the narrative as it comes, changing everything as it pertains within our society, within our world, as it pertains to government, as it pertains to the family, as it pertains to even within the church. We're, we're adjusting things to fit our, what we deem, what we say, this is now the new norm or the new morality. And in this season, as we're placed within this cocoon, as we're brought back into our homes, what the, is taking place is that we need to reestablish God in our homes, God in our lives, God in our marriages, God in our families. God, we want, we want God back in our city, back in our nation. Back in the world. We want to we wanna welcome him. Because even though we know. That this was not sent by God. We do know. That it's being used by him. We know that he holds. The whole world in his hand. He's got everything. Under wraps. So this doesn't catch God by surprise. It caught us by surprise. And I know that there's even many individuals that want to convey that they knew, they understood, but no one knew that this was going to happen. Come on, stop, stop lying. Stop deceiving yourself and trying to deceive even some, some of the body of Christ. We didn't know. But what do we do in the midst of a reset? I said a reset. Because the word, when any word that has, uh, starts off with re, R-E, it's meaning, it's time, it's a do-over. Do it again, glory to God. And every sphere of society needs to examine our values as it pertains to life. From the unborn baby to the elderly person in a coma. 
We need to look at our morality. What is, what is, are these things important? From the disparity between the wealthy and the poor, from nations with much to nations with little, of being able to share and recognize that as human beings, that for us to be concerned about humanity, we got to start to even more, that we have to look at our value system as it pertains to the environment, that the benefits of the environment, that the environment is here for us. We are not to be worshiping the environment, but the environment is here for the benefit of man. We have to examine our progress in technology, that we've become, we, through technology has called us to be even isolated, that we've been so locked into our screens that we now have become, the, we're, we're, we, we can't even handle now the fact that we're, by, by, we're, we're isolated. So we see that we have had excesses. We're just on the brink of releasing and coming out where we're seeing uh, going to be rolling out of artificial intelligence. But we still, even with that, we need to understand the morality, how some value system is this going to replace human beings? Is a human life valuable? We have to look at how we're taking away time, how even as a people, we spend our, uh, 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 so much time at work, so much time in the marketplace, and we have lost a generation. We, we don't have time for our family. I want to submit to you that truly, that in the midst of this adversity, I hear God. I see God at work. I'm sensing him moving in our lives, in our city, in our nation, in the earth like never before. I believe that things is being set up for a worldwide revival. I believe that things are set up for the greatest harvest that, that, that no man can put their finger on and say, this is a result of my great preaching, my great being a great orator. It has nothing to do with man, but it's all the hand of God in the midst of adversity that God and is showing himself strong. He's demonstrating his love. So while we're in this season, it is time for us to understand that it's the love of God that's going to keep us and it's the love of God that's going to keep us to the end. So while in this cocoon, I call it a cocoon, what happens within a cocoon? When you consider with a whether it's a moth or a butterfly, when they are, are uh, experience the cocoon stage, it's really the cocoon stage is really a part of a four-stage development of a of the process that is taking place. Because what ends up happening, thank you so much. What ends up happening is that first there's an egg. You go from an egg, the egg is just speaks of immaturity or child or infancy. Then next comes along is what is we look at is called is the lar the larva, or that's when you see a caterpillar that we know. So you see a caterpillar moving, and much of us we have been we have been moving. Our society has been about moving. We're moving, we're moving, but we're much to do about nothing. We're not. We're 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 going places. We're doing things, but truly, it is this next stage of when now the you go from the caterpillar to the cocoon or the crystalless place, and what is woven around now is that. Here is taking place something where, that creates restriction. Something that takes place actually development. There's development that takes place within the cocoon because once you are in the cocoon, then when you come out, glory to God, you come out, you come out a butterfly, glory to God, amen. You come out into a beautiful species. You come out, glory to God, like what uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 tells us that we now are become new creatures. We're, we're a new creation in Christ, something that never existed 
tested before. We're now new glory to God. I want to encourage you, my brother, my sister, to understand that it is God who is at work both to will and do according to his good pleasure. It's God who is in the midst of in, in the midst of your our situation. It may not have been started by him, but it's not been sent by him, but it's been used by him. And as we shift our thinking, as we shift our understanding to recognize while I'm in this cocoon, while I'm in this season where it's dark, there's some things that's going to take place. There's actually an internal transformation that's going to be taking place. In the dark, transformation of one species to another takes place. It takes place in the dark. It, it's tight, it's restrictive, the environment is different, but you're alone. The caterpillar is alone while it's being transformed to becoming a butterfly. The benefit of that is that when the transformation ends, the butterfly, hallelujah, comes out in a better formation than it was in existence before. Oh, glory to God. A butterfly moves a lot faster. A butterfly takes to the air and it's beautiful compared to a caterpillar. A caterpillar is just on the ground and its movement is limited. My goodness. I want you to understand, if you will stay to the end, if you will stay the course, your days, your latter days is going to be greater than your beginnings, than the beginning of COVID-19, the beginning of feeling, oh my goodness, I'm restricted, oh, I can't go here, I can't do this. Oh, I want you to understand, your days that are ahead is bright. God's got a bright future for you, precious one. That's why he told us in the beginning of 2020, he told us concerning Jeremiah 29, 11. He told us, come up, come up. I want to show you your bright future. He knew we didn't know what was going to be taking place come February, come March. We didn't know that, but God knew. This is why he gave us and spoke of a bright future. That we can set our eyes, set our gaze on that. So that we can not be individuals who are complaining. You know, when, when people complain, when you constantly hear individual complaining, when you complain, you're, you're raining on my parade, man. You're raining. You're, 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 you're dampening my... I know today a lot of people say you're, the energy. Oh, my, the energy that's around me. But it's really, you know, they're dampening your spirit. Don't allow people to constantly be complaining. And you know, Torontonians, we love to complain. We love to complain about the weather. We love to complain. Well, I want to encourage you, while you're in the cocoon, while you're at home, while you're working, would you allow a thanksgiving and appreciation to come within your heart? You don't have to deal with the TTC. You don't have to be driving maybe from on the 401 for an hour and a half bumper to bumper traffic in this season. <laughs> you're not you're not coming home ragged and tired and and then you come home and you complain to your spouse. No. All you got to do is you're coming out of your bed and you're walking downstairs to your office. Or maybe you're in an apartment and you're going over to the your 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 office space. Or you have to take the long trek to your laptop to work. <laughs> but you got so much to give God thanks for, amen? Glory to God. But truly we are in the midst of change. So here we go. We're in the midst of change. Say with me, I'm in the midst of change. To come on, tell the, tell the person beside you, you're in the midst, we're in the midst of change. Change. And you see, change is really a part, is, is a part of our life. Every aspect of our life is this constant change that's taking place within our society that's been taking place. But we presently are in the midst of change. While in the cocoon, you're in the midst of a change. When we come out, we're going to be dealing with how we interact with people 
from a different perspective. We're going to speak, be speaking a little bit differently. We're going to be even our preparation, whether it's for our RSPs, all of these things, we're going to think differently. It was a few years ago where you, for your emergency money, it used to be that, hey, you needed three months put set aside. Then in recent years, it was bumped up to six months. Well, I'm telling you now, we're going to have to have the mindset that we got to be having an emergency fund for a year. We gotta, we gotta shift. There's a change. There's change in, in how we do everything is now in the midst of us. We as people have to change. The Bible tells us in the book of Malachi 3, verse 6, that the only person who doesn't change is God. God does not change. He remains the same. Glory be to God. Because if we if he changed, we would be consumed. And we thank him. Lord, I thank you for your, your mercy. Thank you for your loving kindness towards us, towards our people, towards our city and nation and the nations of the earth. Thank you. Thank you. But I want to encourage you. If you're going to stick, keep going to the end, it's going to require that you're going to have to be willing to make some immediate changes. And what's some of the changes has got to be? Well, how are you, how are we going to think and operate when we come out of this? Because hopefully the average person will take hygiene a little bit more seriously. Washing of the hands, Taking that more serious uh, as it pertains to travel. Travel is going to change. How we're uh, at airports is going to tighten up different things. It's going, to, it's, go, it's going to happen. Our interaction and our social interaction and our behavior is going to change. Our, our education, the government. Oh, if I just, I need to take a moment. I need to thank God. I want to thank God for our Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau. Thank the government. Thank them for their willingness to adjust in the midst of a crisis. That they're trying their best to help every person as best as possible. Because this is, unpre this is unprecedented. We've never experienced this, not only in, the, in our nation, but in the earth all at the same time. And our government, as well as many governments within the earth, are trying their best. So let's continue to pray. Let's continue to pray for them. Let's continue to believe that God, that God will speak to them, give them and give individuals creative ideas how to assist and how to help individuals out. So how you handle this season while we're in this cocoon, while we're in this uh, the midst of this adversity, it's important for us to have some stick to itiveness. It's important for us to understand the importance that I am going to go to the end. I'm not trying to abort. I'm not trying to, you know, have on the millennial, millennial, millennialistic mindset that wants to just quickly, you know, change courses, you know, switch jobs quickly, and uh, you know, I'm out of here. No, you can't do that. You can't. You, 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 that ain't happening in this season. You got to hunker down and we're saying, I'm going to go to the end. Because when you get to the end, I'm telling you, we're going to come out like a butterfly. Especially those who are willing to allow character development to take place. Allow the development to take place. Allow character to be developed inside of you. If you're willing to endure to the end, endure to the end. So I want to give you some further scripture on this area because this is the area, that, this is the issue that we need in this hour. I need endurance. I need endurance. I need, I need to develop some character that I'm going to stand. I'm not going to shift. I'm not going to move. I'm not going to jump, try to jump ships. I need what the scripture tells us in the book of Romans chapter 5 verse 3. It says that not only so, but we glory. What a mindset. What a mindset shift. We, I, we glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation works patience. You know, 
never, every time I use this, I always make reference to patience. I always remember the story of the, the man, you know, asking the man of God, Lord, you know, I need patience and I need patience now. <laughs> you know, patience has its work inside of you. Patience doesn't come immediately. You got to, we, we need patience, but patience comes through tribulations. And we live in a society, we have lived in a society that tries to run, run away from tribulation, tries to run away from problems, tries to run away from adversity. But here it is. The Bible tells us that it, this is how patience is developed inside of us. You've got to have some resistance, some tribulation. And we're experiencing some tribulation. Glory to God. We're meaning we're experiencing some adversity right now. So let's go. So the word endurance or patience is the word, the Greek word, hupomone. And hupomone means steadfastness. It means consistency. It means endurance. Hupomone means, hupo means to come under. Mone means to remain and to be steadfast. So putting them together is this is where you get, we got to come under and be steadfast in the midst of adversity. Hupomone is, is translated either patience or endurance. And it really speaks of the idea of the stay, having staying power. Oh, like the Energizer Bunny, where you just keep going. You keep going. You keep going. I know even in the midst of adversity and problems that you, but you keep, you, you got a staying power to keep going. Watch this. Hupa Monet is an attitude of trust and positive anticipation about what God can and will do in the midst of suffering. Did you hear what I said there? I said, what? It's having the trust in God and the positive anticipation. The positive anticipation. If you'd allow me, remember we say 20 speaks of expectation. So it's in the year 2020 that our vision that has been lifted up that we see the future we see a bright future we have anticipation that even in the midst of suffering God is going to keep us we're going to keep going until the end we're going to continue to trust him we're going to be steadfast we're steadfast immovable abounding in love abounding in the grace of God Hupo Monet it's, it's forward looking. Woo, forward looking. Revelations 4 1. Come up here so that I can show you what God wants to show us. He wants to show you your bright future. He wants to show you the end of the matter which is greater than the beginning. Glory to God. It's you being able to understand that there's better days that's coming. That yes, you're going to see yourself, you know, for us, you know, having a wonderful summer. Glory to God. I see us having an a, a awesome picnic. Amen. Being able to go over the islands, go over to the to, to center island. You got to be able to see that. What's saying of be? See that you, you see the bright future. See that the, the, the end of this year, December. 31st that though that the, our beginnings of the of 2020 may have been rough may have been tight oh I see the ending of this year being greater being brighter being better glory to God why because of endurance because of having patience working itself in me Hebrews 12 verse 2 tells us because as we looking unto Jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Watch this. Who is the author and finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. You see Jesus he endured the cross. He had hupomone. He had the understanding that it wasn't that oh my God. Oh, no he understood that there was, there, was, there was a benefit. So he was able to despise the shame. And he understood that he had to go through the suffering before he could get the exaltation. But the exaltation was greater than the suffering. 
this light affliction that we're experiencing for a moment, the moment restriction of a few weeks, maybe even at, at technically ends up being roughly almost about, uh, about uh, uh, two months. The light affliction, oh my God, oh, oh I, I, I have to stay with my, my spouse 24-7. I have to stay with my children 24 Oh, what suffering is that? If you're thinking like that, come on, stop your complaining. Stop your complaining. Shift. Change your perspective. Change your speech. And understand, God wants us to have hupomone. He will, that's what's going to help you to keep going to the end. Because at the end, you're going to come out glorious. The last meaning I'm going to give you about hupomone. Hupomone is, and this is the powerful part about it, is the hupomone endurance, patience grows as we experience more trials. Grows as we experience more trials. Well, the scientists and the World Health Organization, they have said that, you know, Potentially, within the next couple of weeks, it may get a little bit more tighter. You know what? For the, for the kingdom man and the kingdom woman who's anchored in the love of God, you're anchored in patience. You're able to say, devil, you throw whatever you want at me. I am going to, I'm, I come out a winner. I always win. I always win, no matter what. I come out on top because I am an overcomer. You overcome because you got to go through something. Amen? So even while we're going through this valley of the shadow of death, glory to God, our eyes is fixed on Jesus. Our eyes is not only fixed on Jesus, but our eyes is fixed on the prize that we know we're being changed into something that has never existed before. We're going to be changed into uh, into being that winner, into into the glory, because we go from glory to glory. We go from faith to faith, and God is taking his people, and I want to encourage us today. I want to encourage you to be, for what to be anchored inside of you is the mindset that I'm going to the end. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to kick a cave in. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to complain. But just like Jesus, for the joy that was set before him, he endured. He had patience. And because of tribulations, because of COVID-19, it is actually, be, it's being used as a tool for greater glory. Oh, my mindset has shifted. It's being used as a tool for the glory of God to be revealed. This is an hour in which the, we believe that, that the power of God will be released. Oh, well, oh, social distancing, I may not be able to touch you. Well, that don't, there's no distance in prayer. We had the very even the testimony within the last 24 hours. Someone was in a hospital and we prayed for them. We prayed for them over the phone. And God healed them. The individual experienced the transformative power of God tangible in their hospital room. And they got, they got healed. There's no distance in God, no distance in prayer. So we're believing. I am believing that as you and I have the right mindset and we allow the change that has been is taking place while within this cocoon and we have the mindset that we're going to stick it we're going to continue to go to the end we're going to go to the end see at the end is greater than the beginning God is at work in you both to will and do according to his good pleasure precious one I want you to know that if God be for you nobody can be against you COVID can't be against you God is for you. And his love is what has been shed abroad in your heart. His love is what is anchoring and keeping you. It is his love that is going to take you through this adversity. 
So I want to encourage you, stay focused on him. Keep going to the end. Because at the end, you come out glorious. You and your family come out glorious. You and your family. And then us as a family of believers. And then our city and our nation will bloom again. Will grow again. And you and I can be a part of the healing. Can be a part of the transformation of our city and our nation. God bless you. Would you bow your head? Father, I thank you for each and every individual here under the sound of my voice. Father, I thank you that you will continue to have your way in and through us. Continue to cause us to be have a, a shifting in our thinking, a shifting in our speech, a shifting in how we hear things so that we can understand that we are being changed for the good. And Lord, that you are going to use us as agents of change. Lord, as you've used men and women of old, that you are at work in us today. Father, I thank you that for that husband and that wife, that, that individual who is listening even right now, that you are causing their heart to be touched and causing them to say yes to you. So maybe you're, here, you're, you're listening to me and you are not in right relationship with God. I want to give you the privilege of saying yes to Jesus. Today, the Bible says, is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow, but today is the day of salvation. You can have the assurance of knowing that you can spend eternity with your loving Heavenly Father. You don't have to be afraid or fearful of, oh, oh if uh, this happens, if, if I contract COVID, that I'm going to die. No, and, 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 no, God loves you. He has a bright future for you. And you can take this moment to say yes to him. And we here at Kingdom Gate Equipping Center, we want to be able to help you in your journey with the Lord. So if you would repeat after me, if you are willing, if you're desirous of saying yes to Jesus, would you repeat after me? Father God, I come before you in the name of Jesus. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that he died and he rose from the grave for me. I renounce Satan. I declare that I am a child of God. The Bible tells you us that when we confess with our mouth and we believe it in our heart, just that simple act, confession of faith, causes Jesus to live inside of us, the Holy Spirit to live in us. Now we want to be able to help you. You'll see at the bottom of the screen that you can contact us at www.kgec.ca and we'll be able to help you and be able to assist you in your walk with God. Let's get our communion emblems for us to participate in the Lord's Supper at this time. We, with your family and also all families within the earth, we recognize that these emblems represent our Lord's body Amen. and his blood, which was broken and was poured out on our behalf. I'm going to ask Prophetess in a moment just to pray for the bread, and, I want, and I'm going to pray for the wine, and we want to do this together because we are one body. Prophetess. Amen. Just let's bow our heads as we go before the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you thanks, we give you praise. Lord, how we love you, how we delight in you, and how we thank you for making the ultimate sacrifice yes. on our behalf. You didn't have to do it, but you did because you loved us so much, and we are so grateful. Today, I lift up the bread representing your broken body, which was broken for us, broken on behalf of us. I thank you to this morning that you allowed us, oh God, to enter into your promises through your death. 
I thank you that your body was broken for us and we accept and believe by faith and we give you thanks in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. On the same night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, he lifted it up, he broke it and he said, here, take eat. This is my body that was broken on the behalf of you. Let us eat together. Father, we thank you for this cup of blessing yes, Lord. that represents your blood that was poured out on Calvary for the redemption of mankind. Yes, we thank you for the blood that was poured out even in the, the heavenly sanctuary. Lord, we give you praise and thanksgiving today because, Lord, the blood speaks of covenant yes and father we thank you for the covenant lord that you said that you would not alter oh god you have a covenant a love covenant with us for a thousand generations and we are grateful today because of your body and your blood that we are able to be and walk in wholeness yes. thank you jesus so we thank you that even as we drink, we drink knowing that we are healed, we are protected from COVID-19 and any plague, any yes. sickness, disease. We're, 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 we're protected, oh God, from death, Lord, from mental illnesses, mental disease. We are the healed of the Lord. In Jesus' name, let us drink. Come on, right where you are, would you just lift up your hands? And just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for healing. Thank you for wholeness. Thank you for the covenant. Thank you for strength. Thank you for provision. Thank you for everything that you have already given to us through the sacrifice, the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's continue to worship him. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We bless you. Amen. Hi everyone, you just finished listening to an amazing word by Apostle Roger Gushway, and I know for a fact that you've received something out of that word. This is a time like never before. It's unprecedented. We're in a time where we're in a cocoon, where things feel tight and restricted, but God is still faithful to us, his church, and to his people, where he wants to reveal himself through his people. Now, I wanna remind you that there's so much happening in the week that we are pushing out content for you and your loved ones on all our social media platforms, YouTube and Facebook. We're on Zoom doing Bible studies. Get connected with us. Check us out on Instagram. Check us out on our Facebook page and see all the things that are in store for you through Christ's body. Now, I wanna thank you as well for those who have been giving donations that are really going to the Ministry of Helps and helping those in need at this time. We all know that there's so much happening and things have really changed and there's family members friends those who are in need of toilet paper they're in need uh, of different things food a number of different items so what you want to do is continue to stay in touch with us continue to donate so that we can be a blessing to those who are in need in this time thanks so much for watching and looking forward to seeing you next week